Today with Joseph Prince. The tithe is the proof that however blessed you are, you never forget that God is your source. Honour the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your wine press will burst out with new wine. When Jesus appeared to John and says, I am the first and the last, the first letter, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and last letter of the Greek alphabet. But then when you talk to a fellow Jew, do you think he said Alpha and Omega? No, it's translated for us. He will speak Hebrew. What is it? I am Aleph and Taf. The first letter and last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Aleph, Taf, you put together, is the fourth word of the first sentence of the Bible. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It says, in the beginning, God, three words there. The center one is Aleph, Taf, untranslated. The heavens and the earth, three words. Make a menorah, center, untranslated. Which is the signature of Jesus Christ right from the beginning. He says, I am the Aleph, Taf, he revealed that He is the Creator. Amen. Are you with me so far? Yes. All right, so very clear, shalom. So when Paul says shalom, when Paul says shalom to his fellow being, fellow human beings, right? What, is it, what does it mean? It's a mouthful. Do you see it, people? All right, it's not just peace of mind. Yo, peace, bro. Yo, pre peace, bro. Peace. We, we mean peace, peace of mind. All right? Peace, bro. Don't go in pieces. <laughs> Amen? Yeah, it, it, the idea is there. It means complete. Completeness, right? Completeness. Not in pieces. Hello? How many want peace? Amen. Bible peace. Amen. Right? And every time Paul opens up his uh, letters, he says, grace and peace. Shalom in the Hebrew. Right? Irene in the Greek for peace is the same. Same. Same Bible. Different words. Sorry, different uh, 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 language of the same word. Okay, so God told Isaac, I bless you, right? Bless you. Okay, look at the bless. Dwell in this land, I'll be with you and I'll bless you. The word there is Barak. Barak. Now, what is Barak? The noun is God, like God told uh, um, Abraham, I'll bless you and you shall be a blessing. I will Barak you and you will be a Baraka. At the value of Baraka, you shall be a blessing. So blessing is the, the noun, right? Barak is the verb, okay? So this is Barak. What is Barak? So I say, God will bless you in every area of your life. Amen. Where it really matters, number one, relationship with God. Amen. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. The blessing of Abraham has come on us. Amen. Hello? Amen? Real quick, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. That the blessing, okay, Christ has redeemed us. Who is us? You and I, you and I. All right? We are now, we have been ransomed from what? The curse of the law. We are not under the curse of the law. Amen. Amen. Even though we are not perfect, we are not under the curse of the law. Okay, why? Because, by the way, it cannot mean anything but that we are not perfect. Why? Because if you say, Pastor Prince, it's only for people who, who, are, who are keeping the law. It makes no reason why is there a curse for him. Why should there be a curse for someone who is keeping the law? It only means something when people are not perfect. Right? But he says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. And notice the, the purpose, that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing of what? Abraham might come on the Gentiles, that's you and I, non-Jews, through Jesus Christ. How? Through faith. They might, we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Do you see that? So the blessing of Abraham, the blessing that brings every blessing is righteousness of faith. In the midst of life's challenges, you are not alone. You have a good shepherd looking out for you. We'd love to send you this Psalm 23 magnet as a daily reminder of God's promise of provision, rest, and peace. Request your free magnet today. Offer available to U.S. and Canada residents only. God has made you righteous with Him. You're so close, your position before God right now is so near Him. Say so near. so near. You are so near, nearer you cannot be. For in the person of His Son, you are as near as He. Okay? You cannot be nearer. You are in Christ, so near to God. When you pray, you must always have the sense, I'm like, not like God so far away. Talk to God. Amen? 
some people just yell by themselves they yell, oh God! It's like, you start from the wrong premise, like God is so far away. Eh? Lovers don't yell, you know. You don't walk, you know, I don't know if they still date in botanic gardens or not. Like with last train, you find out all of a sudden you're walking in the evening. Oh, I love you! What does she want? Not Clara! Swedish! I know it's a Japanese couple. Another one. Sarayo! Yo! All the monkeys scrambling. Oh, hiding here and there. Right? I love you too! Say, man. Now we know where they are. You know, it's like, no one does that. Lovers don't yell. Lovers whisper. I love you. I love you. Love you too. Amen? Let's be in front of the parents. Love you. Sometimes far away, just... <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen? <laughs> This kind of thing must teach you all. Okay. <laughs> so the blessing of Abraham comes on us. Right? So God says, I bless you. Say the word Barak. Barak. Now, Barak includes blessing in the area of prosperity in terms of material things as well. Is that in the Bible? Okay. You say, Pastor Prince, that's your opinion. That's your opinion. Okay. He says my opinion. Let's go to a scholar, a Hebrew scholar. This time, not Mounts. I find somebody else. The New International Dictionary of New Testament Theology. Sounds fancy? <laughs> These are scholars who are reputed who write this kind of books. See what he says. Basically, Barak, or eulogia, by the way, eulogia is the Greek for blessing. Bless. All right? So, left is Old Testament Barak, New Testament is eulogia. Same meaning. Okay? Like you say, you say a eulogy, right? It's from the Greek word eulogia. You, good, logia, word. Okay? It's a, together it becomes blessing. Basically, barak, the Hebrew word barak means and do with beneficial power. When God blesses you, listen, in this time of famine, when God blesses you, you are endued with beneficial power. Amen. To effect all these things in your life, the nature of the blessing is that of the conferring and transference of beneficial power. Beneficial, say beneficial power. All right? which produces fertility in men and in livestock and lands. Would you say that back in those days, Barak, because it's translating for the Old Testament blessing of the Israelis and all that, in what way does it manifest? Because they are all people involved in husbandry, in farming, right? They, they grow grapes, vine, uh, uh, vine grapes and figs and, and um, olive trees and all that. The more they have, the more they prosper. And they have flocks as well. So the more uh, fruitful their flock is, what happens? They prosper. So here it says, all right, this blessing works vertically in the continued growth of succeeding generations. Horizontally, it, it affects peace, security from enemies. Think of that, think of that. Good fortune. Now we come to Chinese New Year. Is this a Christian study book? <laughs> and well-being. What does that mean? Well-being. Does that mean that you are always sick, always tired, no energy, depressed? Is that well-being? No. Well-being for a tribe or group expressed most comprehensively in the concept shalom, well-being again. So, Barak and shalom is very close. Can you see that? All right, if this book is not enough, let me show you another book. This is a theological workbook of the Old Testament. Your Grace Academy has started. All right, this is your theological workbook of the Old Testament. Now watch this. To bless in the Old Testament means to endure with power for success, prosperity, fecundity, and longevity. You know what's fecundity? means you are very fruitful, plenty of children. How many want blessing? Fecundity. How many want fecundity? Okay, la, at least you know you, you are fecund. <laughs> you want to have a lot of effect or not? Never mind. All right? You are fecund. All right? Fecundity means having a lot of 
children. That means you are very fruitful, fecundity. For the animals, like the sheep that they, 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 they raise, the goats and the, the, the cows and all that, when they have fecundity, they have plenty of offspring, which increases the wealth of those people in those days. But in our context, what does it mean? Our business, our ministry, flourishes, increases. See, God doesn't think that when these things increase, they're a curse. For Him to put the word, bless. Isn't the blessing, today we hear, when God removes something, is to bless you, my friend. When you're not feeling well, there's a lesson. It's a blessing for you. What's the lesson? I want to know the lesson fast. I want to learn it fast so that this lesson can be shortened. All right? No. Usually, sometimes, it takes the life away before the lesson can be learned. No, my friend. If that is true, if people who are always broke, always poor, are the only ones God is calling to preach the gospel, and those who are sick, always sick, always on their backs, are the ones that God calls the gospel, uh, preach the gospel, the gospel would not, never go around the world. Think about it, people. Who is behind this, this systematic uh, elimination of this teaching in the church? Why? Because he's trying to stop the gospel from spreading. Think about it. If you are always broke, can you sponsor the gospel? No. If you're always sick, can you be in a position to go around, share with people, or even travel, or even, you know, put in effort if you're always flat on your back? No. Is this the army that God is raising to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ? So the devil wants you to believe. No, I am not for, listen, I'm not for love of money. Let's establish that once and for all. And the Bible says, it's the love of money that's a problem. All right, 1 Timothy 6, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. Don't say money is the root. Read carefully. The love, avarice, love of money is the root, is the root of all kinds of evil. It's amazing, and you know, I can preach a whole sermon on this. All kinds of evil can be traced back to money. You think that, oh, this is uh, uh, nothing to do with money. It can be traced back to money. All kinds of evil in the world today can be traced back to money. People say, well, well a, lot, a lot of animals are now extinct. Why? Love of money. A lot of things. All kinds of evil means all kinds. You know how to break the love of money in your life? You don't want all kinds of evil to manifest in your life, right? You know how to break it? The tithe. That's why God gives a tithe. And that's why it's so, so attacked by the enemy. Amen. The tithe is the proof that however blessed you are, you never forget that God is your source. Amen. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase. So shall your barns be filled with plenty and your wine press will burst out with new wine. Amen. Honor the Lord with your substance and with the first fruits, your tithe of all your increase. Jacob said to God, of all that you give me, when he had nothing but the clothes on his back, and the staff in his hand, he left home, in fact, fled from home, because flee, fleeing from his brother who was about to kill him. He told God, of all that you give me from now on, I'll give a tenth to you. And that's before the law. That was before the law. When he came back many years after, now with his family and his 12 sons that make up the 12 tribes of, of Israel, he came back plentiful, with plenty and all that, all, a lot of herds and all that, and he had a lot of people with him at the time, God reminded him, remember Jacob, I am the God of Bethel. And God said this specifically, where you vowed a vow to me. What was the vow? The only vow you read, all that you give me, I'll give a tent to you. Amen. No senior partner asked for one ten. No. God, God is a senior partner. I guess you understand it, right? Amen? Now, again, relax. Relax, brief. <laughs> Am I asking you to tithe? No. This message of tithing, the Bible says in Hebrews, is for people, it's strong made, it's for people who have a revelation. God doesn't take the tithe from people who don't have a revelation. And that's why it's so disputed. It is still valid for today. Amen. And it's sad. When you have people saying, oh, you know, I, I don't believe in this anymore. I don't believe in that anymore. You know, without even knowing the repercussions of what they're saying. And now after the pandemic, so many churches, especially we thank God for our church. Our church people are amazing. 
All right, New Christian Church is blessed. Amen. I must say that. But in, yes, you deserve it. Amen. I salute you. You know, I, as a volunteer pastor, I love coming here to preach. Amen. You ought to take care of all these people who are drawing a salary. Amen. <laughs> I love this church. And, and, and really, we are helping other churches. One of the first things we did when we went into a, 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 a you know, the, the pandemic in, in 2020, right? One of the first things we did, and Pastor Lawrence is here, is that um, now you can focus on Pastor Lawrence, whether he agree or not. Uh, so Pastor Lawrence remembers that one of the first things we did was to sit down and discuss churches in Singapore and around the region, but basically at the time Singapore, that are suffering, that need help. Yeah. All right? Financial help. Okay, because we hear that many of them, um, they're not getting the help. Amen? So we, 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 and then the thing is that must do it anonymously. You'll never find their names. We want to do it anonymously. The record is there, but you, you, we won't announce to you their names, which church and all that, because I don't want the pastor to be embarrassed. You know, one thing we tell them, when we support you, please don't say it's New Creation Church. Don't have to tell anybody, except those you are accountable to, all right, in your, your church council and all that. But don't, don't mention us. Amen. Don't ever mention us. Okay, another thing we did was that uh, churches did not know how to get online. We have the technology, we have the expertise, we have the people. So we invite them to come to our, our, our office to learn how to go online. We send some people over to teach them how to do it. And again, we won't mention it so that their members will not hear about it. And, and the pastor don't have to be embarrassed also. You know what I'm saying? All right? One of the first things we did. Now, are we putting a feather in my cap by sharing? I think this is probably the first time, right, Lawrence, I'm sharing uh, publicly for the first time. I'm just, I'm just telling you, that is what a, a good prosperity Teaching is all about to be a blessing. Amen. Amen. It is not to be greedy. It's not the love of money. Yeah, give Jesus the praise. Amen. This is your church. Amen. So even after the pandemic, right now, many churches, many churches, we thank God that this is not true of our church. Our church is still going strong by the grace of God. And, uh, uh, the, the, the people who are tithers are the solid backbone of this church. Thank God for them, who have this revelation. But many, many places of the pandemic, they are suffering financially. There's, some churches are shutting down. Some can't pay their rent. Some can't pay their... And then we got teachings coming up. Oh, you know, we don't believe in prosperity. You know, Christians rising up. You are prosperous. Keep quiet. Amen. Don't, don't rob people of the truth. Number one, good ground is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Wherever the gospel is preached, if you don't think I'm preaching the gospel, never mind, don't sow. Go find a place where the gospel is being preached and sow into it. Because I'll tell you one thing. What Isaac did was this. He was famine. The famine was bad. Okay? Because it was mentioned like it was the famine of Abraham. The famine of Abraham was like that of Joseph in Genesis. So it's same famine. And I established last week that there's a clue here, which I won't go into now. There is a time when Russia is prominent, right? Oh, pastor, show me the clue. Go and get the message last week. Last week, don't want to come, now you come and won't expect me to go back for you. <laughs> Just for you alone, you got thousands of people waiting, you know, for other things, you know. And time is of the essence, you know. Before you know it, I must send you back, right? okay? So, pastor, you scold me one. Hey. Part of the ministry is reproof, rebuke. <laughs> because I love you, man. I love you. Amen. I want you to keep on hearing. You miss one Sunday, all right? You know what happened to Thomas when he missed one Sunday? <laughs> Jesus appeared the previous Sunday. He, he wasn't there, right? When Jesus appeared again, he, by the way, he, didn't appear, he wasn't there and he became an unbelieving believer. He says, unless I see the print in his hands, I won't believe, right? And Jesus appeared next Sunday just for... Thomas also. <laughs> right? So one Sunday, is, it makes a difference. And y'all, by the way, y'all going to revenge holiday, right? <laughs> I know school is coming to an end and all that. Do not forget to tune in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right? I don't care. In the midst of your sashimi, you can hear. <laughs> all right? You don't have to be listening or watching. You can be listening. Understand or not? Amen? You need to get into the Word. One, if not just one week, huh? wow, I'm telling you. You become a Thomas. 
If your name is Thomas, my apologies. Okay, <laughs> so the love of money. Okay, so watch this. It says that, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness, and greed is the problem, and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It's no joke, you know. I mean, you have love of money, many sorrows is coming your way. It's like an arrow, you'll be pierced with many sorrows. That's what the Bible says, all right? So money is a tool. It's a servant, it's not a master. Jesus is the master. But having said that, you don't throw away money and say, money is the root of all evil. A lot of people, money is the root of all evil. Hey, read your Bible. Uh. <laughs> read your Bible, amen? It does not say that. Amen. Well, the Bible says it's hard for rich people to enter the kingdom of God. Really? Really? Well, the disciples thought that's what he said. Then Jesus clarified. Look at this. Jesus looked around, at, or not, around his disciples and said, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? The disciples were astonished at his words. You know why they're astonished? They must be quite rich. They have a fishing business. <laughs> they have partners. Remember, J Peter had partners. They have partners in their fishing business. When Jesus says it's hard for rich people to enter, you know what happened to them? They were astonished. Like if they are poor, they say, yeah, amen. <laughs> they were astonished. Why were they astonished? They must be quite okay there, financially. Then Jesus knew that they misunderstand. And Jesus explained again. Watch, this is very important. He says, Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard it is for those who trust in riches. Not those in God. Those who trust in riches to enter the kingdom of God. Like I said, can you have the love of money with no money in your pocket? Is it possible? Can someone with no money love money? Yeah. Every time they think, money, money. I wish I had more money. I can't do that lah. I got no money. All right. Who is your God? Your God tells you, go here. I got no money lah. So money is your God because your money says, no, stay. God says, go. No money. <laughs> Amen. I can't do that. Why? God says, do that. No, I can't do that. Why? No money. So you say, who is your God? It's the one you obey. So you can see how the devil can bring in lack of money, right? Listen, people, to control you. So we're not controlled by money. Like this beautiful picture in, in Deuteronomy 28, the blessings are behind. Their priority is always behind. They come on you and overtake you, but you are focusing on Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, gold, frankincense, still follow Jesus. They still follow Jesus. Amen. Go after Jesus. Praise the Lord. Pastor, you mentioned gold. Gold is no good. You know, there's a Bible principle called the law of first mention. All right? The law of first mention. That means every time a subject is mentioned for the first time, there's something significant. Would, would you like to know when gold was mentioned? In Genesis chapter 2, it says, A river went out of Eden to water the garden, became from there four river heads. The name of the first is Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. Um, uh, some of you might be, uh, might be intrigued to know that Josephus, the Jewish historian, says he believed Pishon is the river Indus or Ganges, Ganges River. Now, there's a lot of opinions okay, about this. Okay? I'm just telling you what Josephus believed. The name of the first is Pishon, but now the earth is divided, so the, all the geography is changed. So one of the rivers is called Pishon. It is the one which skirts the whole land of Havila where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. So the first mention of gold is good. Just reading the Bible, folks. I'm just reading the Bible. There must be a purpose why God would... Be. See, again, like money. It is not gold that's wrong. If gold is wrong, gold is evil, God did wrong. Can I say that? Because God put the gold. Hey. God put the gold here, right? Then who did God, who put a goal here? My auntie, she got plenty of gold. No, God put the goal here. And the first mention of goal is good, right? Now, because of time, I have to close with this. I'm, I, I need you to see this. This is very important. Okay? Is, did Jesus take the curse of poverty on himself on our behalf at the cross? So that verse you all know, and some people here are well established in it, but you look at 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, verse 9, You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sakes He became poor, that you through His poverty might become rich. 
right? So here, the, stand alone, you can, you can say, oh, spiritually rich, spiritually poor. You can, say it, you can say it that way. And who is there to argue? But everything must be translated in context. Remember what we said about uh, how to study the Bible? Must be translated in context. This is talking about physically, even physically, he was destitute. They gambled for his clothes at the foot of the cross. One of the things he carried for us, of course, f- first and foremost, he carried our sins. Praise the Lord. But the Bible also says he carried our diseases. Amen. Himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. With his stripes, we are healed. But he also carried our poverty. Thank you for tuning in to Joseph Prince Ministries. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to receive all our latest videos. And join us this Sunday for church on Grace Revolution Church Online. 